AMD's new line of XT CPUs is out, and with them comes the question of what should you buy? The 3900 XT or its non-X counterpart, or ditch AMD altogether and go with the 10900K instead? Well, in this video, I want to test them out and try and answer that question. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now, the new XT variant is ostensibly the same chip as the standard 3900X, with a few minor tweaks, mostly to its clock speeds and mostly its boost speeds. Its base clock is slightly higher, but more importantly, its single core boost clock is now 4.7 gigahertz, and its all-core boost clock is now up to 4.6, up from 4.2 on the standard one. Now, all of those boost speeds are still heavily contingent on temperature and power delivery, and so if you are in a, a thermally restricted uh, situation, it's not going to perform any better. With that said, when you can keep it cool and keep it well-powered, this thing can just walk away from the standard X variant. Now in my testing, I was using an ASUS X570 Strix F motherboard with an ASUS 240mm LCAIO, which is from the Fierce PC system that I'm gonna be doing a full review of at the end of this week, so make sure you're subscribed to see that. It's a pretty interesting system, rather unique case too. Uh, but either way, that's the, the test system I'm going with. It's a, a fresh copy of Windows, and we're going to be testing out productivity and gaming. So let's start off with actually synthetic benchmarks and Cinebench. Let's start off with a single thread result where you can see that the 3900 XT can really stretch its legs when it can turbo boost uh, to gain a decent advantage over the standard X and the 10900K as well. When it comes to the multi-threader results, this one is pretty much within margin of error between the two, and that's mostly because the 3900 XT had been running for a bit longer and so had effectively heat soaked the, the cooler and therefore wasn't able to turbo boost any higher than the standard X, which does present a bit of a limitation of the XT chip. Now when it comes to Premiere Pro, there is a slight advantage, about 4 seconds here, in rendering my 10 minute test render, although the 10900K still does have a pretty convincing lead here in CPU only rendering, thanks to Adobe's preference for fast Intel cores. When it comes to Blender though, that one prefers just as much compute power as possible, hence why the two chips are almost identical and the 2 core less 10900K doesn't fare so well. Where the 10900K also doesn't fare very well is in its power draw. This drew 223 watts while rendering in Blender, whereas both Ryzen chips only drew 142 watts. What is quite impressive though is that both Ryzen chips actually ended up drawing almost the identical amount of power, so very impressive there. In gaming, it's pretty much what you would expect. The 10900K does still have an advantage here, generally speaking, no matter the resolution or a game, but obviously it does vary slightly. Between the X and XT variants, those seem to trade blows, with the, the general trend being that the XT chip is ever so slightly faster, depending on how well you can keep them cool. Let's take a look at those results. So starting off with Battlefield 5, all of these games are going to be showing the 1440p result tested at ultra settings. If you want to see 1080p and 4K results, check out the written article linked in the description down below. Now when it comes to the two Ryzen chips, these are pretty much within margin of error of each other and it really depends on how thermally constrained those chips are and how well they can turbo boost. Whereas with the 10900K, it's generally just going to be the ever so slightly faster chip, both at 1080p, 1440p and even at 4k at times as well. When it comes to Call of Duty Modern Warfare, this plays out a bit more how you would expect. The XT variant gets about 5 FPS more and a better 1% low as well than the standard X and the 1900K has another 5 or 6 FPS over the XT which again is pretty much what you'd expect and a very good 1% low score as well. This actually, this trend happens across all of the resolutions generally speaking, obviously 4K tends to be a bit more of a, a GPU bound scenario but at both 1080p and 1440p these results are pretty consistent. The same goes for PUBG as well. In fact, there is a, a pretty big difference here. Of course, this is a, a very variable game in terms of the FPS that you get, and even from things like uh, going from looting in one stage to being more out in the open, there can be very drastic FPS differences, hence the difference in performance. But overall, they're pretty similar. Obviously, the 1000K still has the advantage here. Um, and when it comes to Fortnite, again, this is a fairly standard 
expect a result where the X provi uh, you know, provides a decent amount of performance, the XT provides a little bit more, and in this case the 1900K while having the same average does have a slightly better 1% low result which generally indicates a slightly better gaming experience overall although when you're talking about well over 140, 150 FPS you don't tend to notice that quite as much. So the XT is a faster chip and so it makes it an obvious choice over the standard X, right? Well, not quite, or at least it depends on the price. If you can find it for almost the same price as the standard X, then definitely go for it. It's an obvious choice in that case because you get a bit of extra performance, a bit of extra boosting, especially if you're planning on going with a good CPU cooler. But right now, at the time of filming in the UK, the XT variant is about £40 more than the standard X, and I'm not sure that you get that much performance to justify that much of a price difference. I think you might actually be better off spending that £40 on, say, lower timing RAM and getting a similar performance jump than going with the XT variant. But what about Team Blue? Well, the current pricing listed for 1900K is £600. And at that price point, it's just not something that you can recommend for pretty much any use case. Sure, you do get a bit of extra gaming performance, but for that kind of money, you could easily go and spend that 100 150 pounds more on, say, a, a faster graphics card, whether it's the tier up or just a higher overclocked version or better cooling or so many other things that could get you that extra performance and you would be buying two extra cores, so better productivity performance to go with it. You know, if it was you know, more like 400 or 450, it wouldn't be so hard to recommend, but at the pricing that it's at, it just doesn't make sense for anybody. So if I had to give you a single recommendation for just one of these chips, I would have to give it to the 3900X. Like I said, the XT is a slightly fast chip, and if you can find it at a good price, it's pretty much a no-brainer. It's the same thing, but slightly faster. But when it comes to the 1900K, it just doesn't make sense. I would personally, if you want a great gaming CPU and you only care about gaming, the 106 or 10700K chips are a much better value proposition for just gaming. And so that's where I would head if that's all you're after. If you want to do productivity on the side, then these Ryzen chips are a stunning value as well as obviously gaming performance too. And so they get a solid recommendation. Now with that said, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the chips? Which one would you go for if you have picked one? Which one did you go for? And also, what do you think of the 10900K's current value proposition? Um, is that different for you where you are? Also, if you want to check out any of these chips, I'm going to leave links to them in the description down below. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and when you watch this because it can and does vary. There will also be a load of other links in the description you can check out from merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool designs, Patreon for ad-free videos and supporting me directly, or there's also a load of other affiliate links down there for people like Overclock GK if you're buying from them, Streamlabs OBS or VPN options, and a load of other stuff too. Like I said, make sure you're subscribed for the Fierce PC system review, uh, which features the 3900 XT and a very fancy 2080 Ti and rather nice case. Do check that out. I'll also leave some more videos over there for you to check out too. Maybe the uh, 1900K review, if you want to see how that performed at launch. And that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. But otherwise, we'll see you all in the next video.